In this video, we discuss quantitative aspects of phase diagrams by deriving the Clapeyron equation. All right, so the Clapeyron equation is a way to quantitatively determine what the slope of any of the phase boundaries in a phase diagram is. All right, so uh, let's try to see if we can then begin to use thermodynamics to learn more about the significance of these phase boundaries. Right. In a phase boundary, what you have is an equilibrium between two phases. So at heart, what you have is that the molar gives energy or chemical potential of two phases that I'm going to call just alpha and beta. Okay, you have that the molar gives energy of those two phases is the same. Now alpha and beta are just placeholders for any of the phases that you may want like liquid, gas, solid, or, or various of the solid, solid phases. It really doesn't matter, because this equation is going to be universal. It applies to any phase boundary. OK, so uh, now what we're going to do is just apply a change, right? So the idea is that uh, we might be in this point of this diagram, and we want to look at what's the slope of this phase boundary, right? So what is it? Uh, uh, how does that line change so that when you change the pressure and temperature, you end up in that second point of that line? Right, so there's going to be a little change in this molar Gibbs energy, okay, of that phase, but in order to remain at equilibrium, right, to in order to remain in that line, uh, the same uh, amount of uh, molar Gibbs energy must have changed in the other phase beta. All right, great. Uh, now is when we uh, use our knowledge of how the molar Gibbs energy changes in conditions, pressure and temperature, and yes, unfold this molar Gibbs energy again into its dependence on pressure and temperature. Okay, so uh, we know that the dependence of pressure is the molar volume, and on temperature is the molar entropy. Okay? And the same thing happens for uh, the other phase, right? So that will be the molar volume of the beta phase multiplied by the change in pressure minus the minus molar entropy of the beta phase uh, multiplied by the change in temperature. Okay, so, so that's, uh, again, what relates these two points uh, in this phase boundary or any two points in uh, any other uh, phase boundary. All right, great. So uh, what we're going to do is just group like terms together uh, we're going to put here the molar entropies and then the molar volumes, right? So uh, this is going to be the molar entropy of the beta phase, uh, differential of T minus the molar entropy of the alpha phase, differential of T. And here you're going to have the molar uh, volume of the beta phase and the molar volume of the alpha phase. Not great. So now if we take common factor of, of those differentials, Right, we're going to get to the following. Uh, that is what happens to the molar entropies, and this is what happens to uh, the molar volumes. Okay, or another way to do this is to just simply put this as a ratio of those differentials, right? So if I now solve for differential of P over differential of T, right? Notice that what I, what I will have is that uh, this is just the change in molar entropy as you go from alpha to beta, right? That is, notice that this is just the uh, molar entropy of the final phase, beta, minus the initial phase, alpha, if your transformation is alpha to beta. Right? So I can write this parenthesis simply as the change uh, from alpha to beta in that molar entropy. Right, so that is how, uh, if this was a vaporization, right, there will be the change in molar entropy as you go from the liquid to the gas, so it will be the molar entropy of the gas minus the molar entropy of the liquid. And this has to be divided over uh, the change in the molar volume. Uh, this is the final phase, that is the initial phase, so in going from alpha to beta. Right, so the change in the molar volume as you go from alpha to beta. Okay, so this is the Clapeyron equation. And what this allows you to do is to predict this property. But notice that that is simply the slope of any phase boundary in your phase diagram, right? Notice that this is just pressure versus temperature. So the first derivative of the pressure 
versus temperature in those lines, that's actually simply the slope, right? So we've been able to then use thermodynamics to predict what these slopes uh, of the lines are going to be. Okay, great. Now, there's one more thing that um, we can do here, and that is to recognize that those lines correspond to equilibrium phase transitions. And the way that we calculate uh, the equilibrium entropy or the change in entropy for an equilibrium phase transition is this, right? Uh, the change in entropy, say from alpha to beta molar, is simply the change in enthalpy uh, in that phase transition divided by the temperature of the transition. And again, this happens at equilibrium phase transitions, but of course, if you're in one of these phase boundaries, you are at equilibrium, right? So the, the most common way to write the Clapeyron equation is uh, the one where you utilize the change in enthalpy in the phase transition, right, divided by the temperature and multiplied by the change in molar volume of the phases, right? Once you go from alpha to beta molar volume. Okay, so again, something very useful because now you can actually predict how the slopes are uh, uh, throughout this uh, phase diagram, right? It doesn't matter where you are, this applies uh, ultimately uh, generically. Okay, great. Um, so uh, to wrap this video up, I'm going to try to explain to you why water is different, okay? And water is different uh, from the slope of this solid to liquid line. Most substances have a positive slope right here. Water has a negative slope, right? So the question is why? Why does water have this negative slope? But the, the, uh, the idea is right here, right? So we're in the solid to liquid phase boundary, right? Notice that uh, uh, if you say this is going to be fusion, that means that my initial phase is the solid and my final phase is the liquid, then uh, uh, we're going this way. We will, uh, we're going looking at the phase transition that way, right? Notice that uh, for fusion, uh, you have uh, that, that fusion is endothermic. Right, so you have to supply energy as heat to melt the solid into the liquid. Right, so the numerator is going to be positive. Now, this is the temperature at which you want to calculate the slope, so it could be that temperature or this temperature or that temperature. This works anywhere in the line. And this is just the change in the molar volume of the phases, and this is where water is different. Right, so notice that if we go to this, di uh, to this uh, parenthesis right here, that will be the molar phase, uh, the molar volume of the final phase minus the molar volume of the initial phase, right? So again, if we're looking at this from the fusion perspective, the final phase will be the liquid and the initial phase will be the solid or the ice. So this is where water is different, right? It turns out that uh, the molar volume of the solid, okay, the volume occupied by one mole of the solid is actually larger than the volume occupied by one mole of the liquid. And that's why when you uh, freeze uh, liquid water, it expands, okay? So again, that's the anomaly of water. What that means is that, again, because this number is larger than that number, this whole parenthesis is negative, and this term right here is negative, uh, because the enthalpy of fusion is positive, temperature is positive, and this is negative. What that means is that the slope of this line is actually negative. So for water, the diagram does not look like this. Instead, it has a negative slope, okay? It's, it's a really steep slope, but it should be definitely negative, right? So it's something like that. And again, there's, there's something that is quite important about this, this anomaly of water, and that is that if you apply pressure to water, uh, you might actually be able to melt the solid, right? So suppose that you're right here, Right, in which you have a solid phase, right? So the ice would be the stable phase, and then now you apply uh, pressure isothermally, right? That means that you go up, right here. Notice that you can actually hit that phase boundary and eventually turn the solid into the liquid, right? So that anomaly of water is again uh, quite interesting because if you apply pressure to ice, you're actually able to melt it, which again doesn't happen for most other substances. All right, in this video, uh, we, what we have done is uh, taken a quantitative picture uh, uh, or, or describe uh, quantitatively uh, how the phase boundaries can be calculated using thermodynamic arguments. We have introduced uh, the concept of the Clapeyron equation. 
Now, in the next video, we're going to see uh, a slight modification, which will be a simplification of this uh, Clapeyron equation, which is very useful uh, if your final phase, the phase that you're going to, will be the gas.